Thanks for checking out our video. To save time, you can skip to the sections listed here by sliding the bar until you see the section name and title at the bottom of the screen. Let's go ahead and get started. And so here we've got in our setup, we've got uh, three rows of lights set up, which would uh, basically mimic three controllers, um, controlling three different zones of lights. So we're going to go ahead and get started by opening Navigan 2.0. I've got two screens here, so I'll drag it into this screen. Um, so for this one, we would like to do a new project. We're going to call this one Video, and we're going to continue with that. Now that we've got a fresh screen open with our newly named video uh, file, we can go ahead and see what's out there. And to do that, we click on Discover Controllers. This will bring up everything within range of the radio device. In my case, I have multiple different types of devices here, so we're going to uh, focus on the LEDRs as that's what we'll be working with. So how to determine which one is which? Let's go ahead and click on the Locate button. You can see there that that's row number two. So we're going to call this row two. And then uh, we'll work down here to the next LEDR. We'll call that locate. We'll call this row three. And then we'll come down here to the next one. This is row one. So now we've got all the rows named. So now what I'm going to do is hold down the control button and select row one, row three, and row two to add devices to the workspace. Now, if I wanted to add more devices that were in a list here, let's say we knew that we needed to add all of our devices uh, to the workspace. What I can do is Control A. Actually, once I click on one, I can do Control A, which will select all 94 controllers that were found, and I can add those devices to the workspace. I'm not going to do that today because I don't want to have to go back through and, and remove those 94 from this project. So another option you can do is you can select the starting point that you know you want to work with and the next one down that you want to work with. And to select this whole group, we simply press the shift key and hold that down while we click the bottom one. That will highlight all of these here and we can click add devices to the workspace and it will bring those in as a group. Much easier than doing them one at a time. So now that we've got our row one, two, and three uh, in our uh, space here, what we're going to do is the same thing we did before, which is Control A to select all of them. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit the refresh button so that we pull down all the data from these three controllers. And you'll see these, this status here will start to update as it pulls down the, the data from those different devices. Okay, we got all three. Uh, they do say no links found, which means that these are fresh devices and they don't have anything uh, linked to them yet. One thing that I'd like to do quickly is just run through the new buttons that are in Navigan 2.0 compared to the old version. So if we look, we have the refresh button, which is still uh, basically the same as the function before. This essentially just downloads the data that's in the controller. It downloads that to the software it will, using this button, will discard any changes that you may have made in the software. So for example, if I go over here to configuration, change this to 10, and then I refresh this device, it will, it will uh, not uh, keep that number. It will delete it because it, it doesn't, it's not looking what I've typed in here. It's looking at what I'm pulling down from the controller. Uh, so in this case, I'd rather use the Verify button, which will allow me to look and see what we've got going on um, as far as what's in the controller and also what's, what are my changed numbers. So if I click the Verify status here, it will look and it will say, it says I need to upload something. Something's not uploaded yet. So where if I click the Refresh button, it will tell me that it's going to throw away that 10 and uh, go back to a green circle. So we're going to say no to proceeding with that. I'm then going to look at the deconfig button. And basically what that means is, is, is if this device, I had finished it and certified it, I could actually say deconfig that and it would take away the green check mark there that would tell me everything's good, which means that I still have some more changes left to do in that device. Um, then we can look at the download uh, feature. This downloads uh, anything out of the controller that uh, needs to work. It's very similar to the verify and the refresh button. 
however, you may need to use it in a little bit different context. Um, and a lot of times you use that in the brand new um, status when you bring in a brand new device. You can use the download or the refresh button. Either way will work. Now we've made a change to one of our numbers here and it's highlighted in yellow because it has not been uploaded yet. You can see here that that needs to be uploaded to the, to the controller and this is for row two. So if we go ahead and you can use either button, you can use this upload here or you can use the upload button here if you're doing more than one. Let's say all three of these had a yellow arrow. We could do control A, highlight all of the list and then click upload and it would do the entire list. So therefore you don't have to go through them each individually. Um, but in this case, we'll just click Upload. It will tell us, um, give us a green green button there, and everything's good. You will get a warning if things did not go well and it did not upload correctly. But in this case, it uploaded correctly, gave us a green circle, so we're all good. If we want to verify that and check that it did go there, and this number actually matches what's in the controller, you can see we got a green circle, so everything's good. So we can call that configured because I'm let's pretend that I'm finished with that device and I'm completely done now with that one. Now I want to move on to configuring row two or row three, I can do that. And now if we want to go back and make changes to this row two, to take away that check mark, I simply click deconfig. Okay, so now I'd like to uh, start to get into some of the tips and tricks that we have uh, adapted for this new version of, uh, of Navigon compared to the old one. We've tried hard to make it significantly easier um, and faster for you to commission jobs and uh, basically get in and out of the, uh, of the space as fast as possible. So for example, I'm going to rename these all as just name and uh, so that we've got all of them uh, basically back to default. Kind of trick it into being back to default here. So we don't necessarily know which one's which um, without clicking the locate button to figure that out. But I want to show you how to uh, rename quite a few things all at once. So if we do control A again, we will highlight the entire list. We can right click on that and it brings up a list. So we can call this rename and we could call this uh, row dash and then uh, we'll click OK. And so now this came up with row 120. Uh, so we can, you can use that for classrooms, for uh, all sorts of different things where you could just have this number, the group, and have it all in there as you need to. It won't always make sense to have row 1 be row 1 if you use the mass naming uh, technique. Um, like, yeah, for example, in this case, uh, the 1 and the 2 are backwards, but you won't normally have it labeled row 123 in the room anyway, so it's not a problem. This just gives you the ability to rename significant numbers of controllers should you desire that, uh, that possibility. One of the features that we were asked about uh, early on was if we, could, if we could mass configure or group configure different things. Um, we were not able to do that in the previous versions. In this one, you can simply right click, copy, the orange box tells you which, which uh, relay you're copying from or which controller you're copying from. And then you can go down to row two uh, and row zero. We can shift click that or we can control click. Um, and then we simply right click and we say, what would you like to paste? Would you like to paste the links, paste the configuration or paste both? In this case, we don't have any links. So I'm just going to say paste configuration. It will now show that both of those have been done and you'll only see a, uh, a click box or a, a, you know, an OK or uh, some sort of warning if it didn't go well. And so in this case, both of them were uploaded, everything went fine, no problem. So if you had 20 of these down in a row, you could easily copy one and paste, 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 paste all the way down. It works out really well for uh, speeding up uh, significantly the, the ability to do that. This next feature is one that will get a video all on its own, but I'll put it here in the tips and tricks video as well so that we can show how, uh, how this works. But first I need to add a dual rocker switch. So I'm going to go ahead and click add links. Um, and you can see we've already got a device in there from a previous test that we were doing, but I'll show you here. You press both of the downsides of the, uh, of the switch, the dual rocker left and the dual rocker right, both populate there showing that we have uh, this switch in there. And so we'll call this one uh, video switch. And 
then, then we will, that because it's highlighted in blue, we can link selected. Um, now we've got the dual rocker left, will control. Oh, I have to click done first. Uh, now we've got the switch will control uh, driver number two or row number two um, in our devices. But you can see that it's, it's only controlling row number two. Um, there we've got it going on and off. We have a dim rate set, so we'll turn that down. So now what I want to do is, because we're controlling this one here, okay, so now we can copy this, and we can paste the links into both of these as well. Again, it's a shift click or a control A, and we'll paste those links there. And now, as you can see, it takes just a second for that information to get in there. And now we've got everything linked to the same switch. So now this whole room is on, is on one switch. So we've got all that done. So now what I want to do is look at uh, setting a new maximum light level. So for this, this is called top trim, maximum light level, meeting the specification of the facility, the school, the, the uh, place of business, whatever it is. So what I'm going to do is hold the on button for five seconds. And that raises the light level to all, for all three of these controllers to 100%. Now, I'm going to uh, use the bottom button to bring that light level down. I'll try and do it here in the video so you can see. There we go. So now we've got a dim level. Those would all three be the same. So we'll come back over here and we'll do Control A to select everything. Now we're going to right click on that and say set max light level to the current value or average. So looking at that, if that if that meets my light needs for a maximum value, I'll go ahead and set that current value for all three of these relays. And you'll see it'll go boom, 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 and it uploaded there. So now let's look at one of these and see what it set it to. So the maximum output voltage is 3.6, and you'll be able to see that that is 3.6 on all three of these devices. If that light level seems too low and you need to raise that light level, then what you want to do is you, uh, again, do Control A to select all three rows, right click, set max light level to 100%, and that will upload all three of those. Then we're going to want to hold this again for five seconds, and it will bring it up to whatever light level you need. Uh, well, that'll bring it up to the max light level of 100%. Then we bring it down again until your light meter reads what you need it to read, and we'll go ahead and right click set max light level to the current value and it will average all three of those controllers and boom 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 and now they're 4.2 um, voltage there as well so it's a little bit brighter than it was before again so if you need to uh, turn those back to hundred percent 10 volts you just simply go to set max light level to hundred percent 10 volts it'll upload all of that and now it reads 10 volts you can see right here Thanks for joining us today. For support, please reach out to your AnOcean supplier or contact us directly at navigan at anocean.com.